Okay, so here we go. Um, you might see down here, we can see under here, uh, Falcon is all done. All right, and all put in exactly how we want it to be. Now, the idea is we're going to prime everything first, okay? Get that completely primed. Then we're going to dismantle it and spray it in sort of separate parts, then bring it together at the end. Now, the theory behind this is where it's going to be primed, we can see exactly where we need to paint to, uh, and we can see all the details and things like that. The only thing we've done is we've masked up, you can probably see down here, the canopy masking tape on the inside all right so that is in there now there is a glass version of this but i want to be sort of a bit film uh true so we're going to keep it uh with clear parts we've masked off obviously top and bottom if you wanted to you could take it apart and take those parts out uh but it's a bit easier this way so usual thing steinol res we love this stuff you, we've seen about it we've got reviews on it and all the rest of it it has got a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in there or ipa because i find it just got a little bit thin and you can hear We've got agitators in there, in my case, marine grade stainless steel nuts. I can't get the top off. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is put it into our airbrush. Now, airbrush is a Hardrin Steenbeck uh, Evolution uh, Infinity. This is the CR Plus, okay? The Infinity, not the Evolution, with a 0.2 needle nozzle set in there. Okay, and turn up the air pressure just a little bit. Okay, because we don't need anything particularly nice. And then all we're going to do is prime everything. All right. So you see high air pressure. So we're just getting in all the nooks and crannies. Okay. And don't worry about how this goes down or anything else. It should be absolutely fine. So that way we can then see this join on here that we're worried about. Actually, I don't think we have to be worried at all. But the great thing about using Steinol Res is that we can use it to get inside this detail down here. Now the back, to be honest, I haven't masked it yet, so I'm just gonna avoid it for the moment. It's not gonna need too many coats down in there. All right, but what we wanna do is come in from all the angles. Okay, just making sure we get in everything. So when we come to take it all apart, we'll have no problems up on the bottom and we're going to run this absolutely everywhere okay so you can see going on very nice very easy what i'm going to do hit the extractor and just finish it off
down, there we go. That's it all completely done. Okay, let's hit the extractor. So what we're going to do, we're going to let that dry for around about... Got a little fingerprint there we just need to take care of okay we're gonna let that dry for about an hour something else like that and then what we can do is we can come back then and put on the actual pre-shading down onto this one okay so what we're going to use is a very heavy black we've got a lot of different contrast colors down to here and then what we're going to do is come in with some other colors okay just to break it up a little bit just so it gives it a not nice more mottly look and everything else then we're going to come in with thin white and grays just to build it up very gently so we can get an area uh, and a feel for how much sort of weather we want how much bleaching we want and all those different areas so slightly a different technique to doing it all but first off let's get that dry totally dry down everything else like that and handleable and then we can come back and start to weather through okay so there we go as you can see put the gun system on just to make it look nice see a bit of a fingerprint where it was but that doesn't matter too much to us as far as handling it okay and there we go so we haven't done the back end yet that's absolutely fine we're going to do that afterwards so what we're going to do is we're going to now going to come in with a pre-shade pre-shade the, the hell out of it completely all right run around all over it okay then we're going to put the top coat onto it bleach and feather that in completely okay and do all the work on it and everything then we're going to disassemble it i know it sounds silly but then we can detail up these nice areas in these hollow sections okay and really bring them to life and that way we can just do a little bit of hose work things like that then put it all together deckel it final weathering to bleach it all together and everything else like that so usual thing with the old pre-shading we got some black here we don't want it to be nice we don't want it to be pretty so we're putting in a little bit we're making up roughly around about a 50 50 mix of paint and thinners where's my mixing brush what's my mixing brush okay so we just give this a whiz round now as i said this doesn't want to be pretty definitely not when you're dealing on something like this which is supposed to be horrible all right and beaten looking and all the rest of it you want it to be as nasty as possible so obviously we're picking out big things in between panels and that but a lot of this panel work here we're not going to worry too much about it okay it's mainly going to be things like shadow areas so down these all right Okay, literally just popping them in. All right, so we're gonna have one down there, we're gonna have one down here. Because we're trying to recreate shadows and certain areas, okay? So we're just gonna take that guy in and then we're gonna come up here. And we're just trying to make our own effects of shadowing and all those areas. So we can go around here. Okay. As I said, we really don't want it to be too nice at all. Okay, so then we're doing things like that, and then we're going to obviously going to come down here. All right, and then anywhere where there's a big section, we're going to come in and take care of it. Okay, so we're just going to do a little bit around the edges. And then it sort of generally sweeps together to join things up, okay? Right, so it's just this type of effect I'm over the top of this guy and then maybe we're just gonna pop him and as I said we're gonna dig our holes down in these just so we're not gonna go around to everyone it's just the big stuff okay just a quick speedy type job over here I should really move this but can't be bothered okay pipe work and hoses and things like that okay now these are going to be painted separate in those so i wouldn't worry too much about doing them right. but the whole idea is just causing a little bit of distress to everything Now these guys here are going to be big and black and pretty horrible and we've got an idea for weathering on them so we're just going to give that everything because it's going to need them again all right and then these around the back here
packages. All right, then down in here, perhaps we'll just pick out a few little areas. But as I say, it's pretty detailed and, and lumpy down there, so we do a lot of that separate. But there we go, and then obviously this guy right here. Which, And that is literally it. Now the gun system on the top, to be honest, I forgot to put them on. So we're just going to give it a light blow over. Okay, and then we're just going to come in here. Okay, just a little bit down in there. This guy on the top. Okay, bits and pieces. Literally just over it. A little bit round these bays, just so it's got that appearance of dirt. Let's face it, Han spends his life in there. Okay. Follow a little bit of pipe work. Okay. There we go, just right on the sky. Alrighty. There we go. Simply done. Nice, simple job, just like that. So what I'm gonna do, flip it over, do exactly the same for the underside, okay? And then we can think about paint. Okay, so there we go, sorted. Looking very nice, no problem at all. Happy how, how that is. Okay, so we're gonna do something completely different. We are now gonna come in and gonna give it a coat of clear. All right, now I've got the old stuff here, amazingly, found a bit. So this is gonna be neat right over this one. Okay, so literally it's gonna come in, color cup, stop me tipping it everywhere. I will put my lid on. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna give this a, a coat quite a heavy coat and to be honest it'll probably be a couple of coats right the way over everything now normally i don't do this but we're doing something slightly different immediately you can see this thing's darkening down all right right the way over but the idea to this is it's going to cause a barrier and this barrier is going to help us when it comes to the next one when we come in with chipping and stuff like that after the paintwork's gone on okay so this is just a protective barrier between me and the item itself all right so we're just going to hit the fan so we get a bit smoky in here all right so the idea being with this is when the next coat of paint's gone on we can chip it scratch it sand it whatever we want to do to knock it back and we're not going to be able to get through this coat of paint because there'll be a nice barrier between the two all right so that is why we're doing this okay just as a, a barrier okay so it's just going to give us a little bit of time between coats all right because otherwise what can happen is one straight too many and before you know it you've actually gone straight into the plastic and we don't want to do that the plastic as we know on this kit is white uh, and chipping is always darker as a rule okay so that's why we're doing it this way again this is very reminiscent of the film way of doing it where they scrape through layers of paint okay so that's what we're trying to recreate here it's where it's all written about so i thought we'd give it exactly the same so we've done that half we'll let that dry okay and then what we can do flip it over do the same and it's going to get two coats so it's got quite a bit of protection between this under here and not the other thing as well a lot of this pre-shading that we're going to be doing is going to be where it's dark okay and that's the point the chips are going to look darker but because we haven't got it everywhere it should give us a nice sort of you know random jumbled look some of the chipping's gray some of it's black uh, and give it that look because don't forget the top coat that's going to go through is going to be a custom mix of something like white and um, I'm probably thinking like tan, uh, deck tan, something like that, because obviously the real one was done with uh, Floquil, white and grime, okay? So we're just gonna try it the other way and just gonna give it roughly those colors in the sort of Tamiya. So XF2, I don't know what the other color is, uh, whatever it is, uh, is it 55? Uh, something like that. Uh, to put those ones down on there but we need this to totally dry and go off so we're going to give this a good couple of hours to totally go off once it's completely finished it goes hard we have no problem with it and then we can come in and start putting the white coats down onto this one to bring it up we can pick out panel colors all those things like that then we can actually start to weather it back and work our way back through those paints by sanding chipping things like that then we've got washes and all the good things like that to really bring this one to life Okay, so there is our glossy coat 
all done. Okay, now the idea of this is, is just to protect it. It gives you a barrier between any weathering you're going to do, the paintwork. So if the paintwork fails, obviously this will light, uh, very sort of cream color we're going to put onto this one. If that fails uh, and we get chipping, scuffing, wearing generally, uh, the layer that's under here that we can actually see, this gray and black, will remain. So we don't get any chipping right the way through down to the white plastic because that is what we don't want. Okay, so as we all know, well, perhaps we don't. Okay, the uh, colours that were used on the original Millennium Falcon was obviously uh, Floquil. Uh, now, Floquil oil in the UK, pff, you're very hard to find it. So it's better to use a substitute. Now, looking at all the photos, one thing you have to imagine is some of the models, studio scale ones, are huge, all right? We have to allow for the fact that this is a small. Now, I'm not a great believer in the scale effect. You'll hear a lot of people saying about, oh, it's the scale effect, you need to do this, that, and the other. By the time you've weathered it, all scale effect goes completely out the window okay and we can do things with scale effects by doing uh, weathering techniques washes dry brushing that give you that effect all right but the thing is when you're dealing with something this small you do have to allow a certain amount for it because this is 1 to 144 scale versus doing a 172nd or you know obviously the bigger stuff 148th all right so from our point of view, we're going to use the next best colours we've got, all right? So what we need really is a nice light sort of deck tan colour. So to be honest, we've got some XF55 uh, here, deck tan, and some normal flat white, all right? So we're going to mix these together. Now, again, I am not a mass believer in the scale effect after a certain point, all right? So from my point of view, what we're gonna do is gonna basically put down a couple of thin coats of this, see how it dries back, because obviously we want the pre-shading to come through, so it's gonna darken the color we got here. We're going onto a gray anyway, so it's gonna be slightly darker uh, and things like that, all right? So they're all little things you need to take into sort of account when you're doing your spraying, all right? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna make up a mix in, if I've got one right here, a little mixing container which in our case is a disposable shot glass okay and then we can work out our color so this is had a good mix now i like to spray uh, xf2 i can put down two coats of it and it'll be solid white all right uh, but you just have to make it a little bit thicker okay so they're just little things you have to think about so down in here here's our color so it's all going to be white to start with all right so we've got a good dollop of white down there just like that now the buff color, okay, or the deck tan color is about right. Now there is some panels which actually this color, and we're gonna come back, and as you can see, I haven't got much in here. This is because we're not gonna need much anyway. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is gonna add a few drops literally in there. Okay, just in here like this. And this is all Mark One Eyeball, and we're just gonna take it until we've got what I would describe as an off-white okay now the thing is when you put it on your brush like this uh, and maybe on your camera it's looking basically white but it is just a slight off white color it's better to be lighter if we're honest than it is darker on this all right and i've got a little plan for the final coat just to give this thing lots of texture which we'll show about in a moment all right but for the moment this is going to be our base color down onto this so we just put our lids onto this okay so to start with we're going to come in with basically your standard tamiya mix of 50 50 all right so we've got thinners in there then we come in with the paint okay we've got around about a third left in there then we're going to give this a very good mix okay nice good mix nice soft brush to break up all the paint particles and everything else like that okay it's a big brush so it holds a lot of paint so make sure you scrape it out we are going to put the top on because as we all know i am the biggest klutz okay make sure the vent hole on the top is always clear if you get no paint coming out it's because you're getting a suction and it goes in now this is going to get dusty very quickly okay here in the studio so i'm going to turn on the extractor we'll start on the underside just so we can have a look just to make sure we're all good okay and we're just going to come in we're just going to put this around and we're just going to put on a lightish layer okay we're just trying to get everywhere so we can change the color okay 
and it's going to be this sort of dusty look to it, all right? And as you can see, it's a high air pressure, so we're getting good coverage. So i.e. it goes on and it sticks, okay? Now, one thing you don't want to worry about is that exhaust on the back, because we're going to do that separately once it's off, okay? Just so going in there, and we're just trying to get in around the gear. So just trying to come in from all the angles. Okay, now we're just going to come in. So we want to come downwards so we can do the the radials of all this in here. Okay, just the rear. Okay, then the upper side. pretty happy the color doesn't look to be that far off it's looking very dusty but that's because it's is a, a thicker coat we're gonna make a thinner coat in a moment for the second one coming in all right so this one at the moment is designed to get in all these nooks and crannies without causing any damage I know getting any flooding and all stuff like that okay Both sides, on the backs, coming in from all these areas, just like that. Okay, so there's coat one on that side. So what we can do now is flip him over, yeah, where we grab him. Okay, and we're just going to repeat on the top. And this, if you like, is your base coat going on here. Just running out of paint, which actually I'm not too worried about there. We've just run out literally just before I wanted it to but that's good enough okay so as you can see now it's down on here it's got good coverage and straight away so we're not got any problems with this at all so what we're going to do is we're going to refill this now with two-thirds thinners one-third paint now the whole idea this will be a wetter coat it will give you a smoother finish we've still got some left over because that's our touch up if we need it and this is going to be a nice wet coat. Now the thing is, if we tried to put this on to start with, what would happen, it would literally just be so opaque, it would hardly cover anything. This now will hopefully bleed everything in. And that's why we're going straight in with it, and we're not letting anything dry out, or you know, finish curing, anything else like that. Top goes back on, and we'll carry on with the top. Okay. So now we can come in. Hopefully you'll see it gives you a more solid look. If we just do half, then you can see the difference. And there we go, there's our half and half down there all right so hopefully you can see it's starting to get a weathered appearance Okay, and now 
as things start to dry back and that pre-shading and those different areas come back, you know, then you can go over them again and again just to knock it back to exactly how you want. So we're just going to come in, we're going to do all this good stuff, all this wiring, hoses and everything down here in the front sections. Because this one just do, doesn't cover its sort of blends, all right? So that is the point to this one. Okay, so you're just generally going around, building up areas, covering, smoothing out. Anywhere that you're thinking needs a little bit more, it's looking a little bit, you know, wrong, for want of a better word. Okay, so, forgetting not to clean out his airbrush. Okay. Um, that's been on there for around about the last 10 minutes okay so it hasn't been doing anything massive okay although my color cup has nicely dried out under the lights okay we just get this going a bit and then we'll dispense all of it so the thing is this is very very flat and it's got texture and this is this is the texture I want okay I don't want a nice smooth finish I don't want a nice paint job I want it to be as rough and ragged as I can possibly make it. The whole point of having it like that is so when we come in with weathering, uh, so in our case obviously it's going to be a clay wash, then we're going to use oils as well, or in our case we're obviously using enamels, okay, over this one. The whole point to it is they've got plenty of grip, okay, they've got things they can actually stick to, okay, and you know, giving you really a nasty finish. Uh, let's face it, the actual vehicle itself or the ship itself has a very worn and distressed look okay and before we do come in let's have a quick look and i can show you what we've got so this is it it's a little bit patchy it's a little bit rough it's a little bit rugged okay uh, but generally it's just a base color for this one okay so i didn't want it to have grids of uh, pre-shading showing through and all those things it's supposed to be a hint of okay so it's supposed to be just little things you know are doing it other things you know you probably your eye won't notice now but perhaps once it's got a wash on it you'll see a slight look like a line dark line and then it fades away instead of being just a dark line and various things like that now, from our point of view, obviously this is the Bandai kit, and it does come with all the panels, which are different colors. You could mask them up and paint them, or you could use their decals, which are... Which are in here, okay? So we've got all the panels um, and all the colors that we actually need here. So we've got the red areas, the different tans, and everything else. Now, these are pretty good. The other reason for doing this type of color, we need to somewhat color match it to what's on here, because this is, if this is not correct, i.e. if this was like bright white, these wouldn't look the same. So hopefully you can see now, this is the type of color we was going for. So it's almost like a dulled down aged white, and that's the type of effect we're going for. But because we have got quite a textured surface, and to be honest, it's like sandpaper, all right, we do need to smooth it down a bit to get the decals on because I don't think even my best softeners and setters are gonna work, okay? So what we're gonna do, we'll load up the color cup once again, okay? And then we're just gonna give this one single coat of a gloss, okay? So in our case, we're using clear. Okay, right the way over everything as well because again, we're gonna put in a little protective barrier. 